Well, Andrea, today's a great day. You know why? <laughs> why? Because you get to drive a 911 for the very first time. I know. How that, exciting is this? And you coordinated your outfit. I did. You kind of did too. Yeah, I We're wore blue as well. Blue. I wore, wore blue as well. Well, this is Miami blue. <laughs> it is Miami blue and it's yeah. an expensive paint option. Just want to let you know, I have driven this car when it first came out in Spain. I encourage you to click on the link and watch that sort of more in-depth review. Today's more about what, what it's like to drive a Porsche, yeah. what these cars mean to people and, and why people aspire to own them, right? Yeah, for sure. Now, one thing I want to say right away is I love the design of this new 992, it's called on the outside. The last iteration was called the 991, very creative. This is called a 992. Yeah. And so what they've done, and the most important thing to notice on this car is the ratio of the wheels to the fenders. They made the wheel in the back bigger than the mm. wheel in the front. Usually if you have 19 inch wheels, they're all 19 inch wheels. Sure. These are 19 at the front, 20 at the back. Ooh. And they're also wider at the back than they are at the front. So that right. gives the car a totally different look and stance. In addition, they put a sort of a black bar across the front where the mm. air intakes are. And the same thing at the back. They put a black bar across the bottom where the exhaust is. They move the license plate down. Makes the car look more stuck to the ground. Right. I think it looks just awesome. Any Porsche looks just awesome. I think it's a beautiful vehicle and I look forward to driving it. It's a once in a lifetime experience. Let's get at it. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. Up or down? Down. Okay. <laughs> is that like a dumb question? Oh, well, we are in a, you know, a Porsche 911 convertible. We got to put the top down. I just want to say that we're on the Upper Levels Highway heading towards uh, the Sea to Sky Highway. Yeah. And um, is this not one of the most picturesque parts of Canada? Amazing. And could we not have picked a better day to the other do thing, this? I want to say, when we do the, the pictures from one car to the other, yeah. the roof is up. Yeah, just yeah. for shooting purposes, because yeah. there's only one person in the car. For sure. So there'll be a little bit of a continuity thing. That's okay. That's okay. Good to see it both ways. Yeah. Roof up, roof down. Here we go. All right. So we are in the new 992 Carrera S Cabriolet. Yeah. That's are just you a mouthful. Your... You know what that means? What does it mean? Expensive. <laughs> uh, are you in your glory my or what? Sheets. I am in my glory. You know I love these cars. Amazing. Amazing. How's the hair? Fine, I've got my hat on. Seems all right. Hopefully my hat doesn't fall off, hey? It should be good. Well, I just, before we get going into all the details, I wanna say that I got a chance to drive this car at the worldwide launch a year and a half ago in Valencia, Spain. Downhill, hard on the brakes, hard on the brakes. Late apex, turning on to the front straight. And away we go, all the way down the front straight. Let's see how fast we go. It's really quite different driving a car when you fly overnight to Europe, you get no sleep, you drive the car, and you're just so overwhelmed by, oh my God, we're driving the new 911. Yes. Now, getting it here and driving it for a week, yeah. I have a different take on this car, actually. Yeah, why is that? Because there's some things I like about it, and there's a couple of things I don't like about it. Right. And, and mostly what I'm not loving is the interior. But you disagree. Well, <laughs> we've had old 911s, and so but when old 911s. Old 911s. So when I look at, the, at this, I like the simplicity of it. It has a really modern feel to it. I think it's quite beautiful. Okay, but when I agree with you, that's what I'm saying. When I flew all the way to Europe and I drove the car. I was so enamored with the outside. We talked about that a moment ago. But sure. getting into it now, you start to see the finer details. Okay. And when you dig into the finer details, it's like, this is all plastic. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. Like, this is plastic. Look at the switches for um, the doors and the center, like uh, heated seats and stuff. They just look like cheap plastic buttons yeah it looks like they cut corners on the inside of this car and this is an expensive car well i was gonna say that why do you have to cut any corners i just wish that you know like the the cayenne and the panamera yeah they have the glass panels yes in the center yes and they look better than this this just looks like plastic but i don't know this just looks like 
like these switches could be out of a Volkswagen Golf. You right, know what I mean? They right. don't look special. Anyway, yeah. uh, what they have done though, to their credit, is they've tried to replicate those Porsches of old yes. by having a very simple and flat dash, yes. which is what the old cars had, but it's just got a modern twist. Well, I don't really think it's going to affect Porsche too much. I think no. people are like, <laughs> you want a 911 Carrera, this is, what you get. this is what you get, and you'll be okay with it. Just maybe don't touch it. Well, that's. I was thinking, if I was had the money one day to get a car like this, what I could I look past it? Oh, yeah. Of course. I'm just, I'm just being nitpicky. I could totally look past it. I got a question for you, though. Yes. If you could afford this car for the price, would you buy a brand new one or would you buy an older one? Knowing, you know, me knowing you that you're just such a Porsche 911 enthusiast. Okay. If I could, like it, like it was money was no object. Yes. Okay. The car I would want today would be the last generation, the 9191. Right. It's called a GT3 Touring. It's the GT3 car, but it just has doesn't have the big tail on the back. That for me, that's just like the perfect car. It revs to 9,000 RPM. It is just the most beautiful thing I've ever driven in my life. This is the sleeper 911. And I, I would never, ever get tired of that. I love you. I want you. Come home with me. So that for me is my my holy grail car. Yeah. Uh, but as an everyday car, yeah. I would I would get the Carrera 4S Coupe, not the cab. I don't. I'm not really a, a cab guy. Right. Um. I I think for Porsche, this is the eighth generation 911. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that Porsche has created a vehicle that is easy to drive. Yeah. You know, in the past, you've had some old ones, and I've watched you maneuver <laughs> it, and it's really challenging. And so what I like about this is that it's easy to drive. Well, the thing is, you haven't driven it yet. I know, but I can feel it. I can feel already that just sitting here, you're not working so hard. Well, that's the, but that's a positive and a negative, right? Like the old air-cooled 911s that I had. Yes. It was a more visceral experience. The car was way smaller. It's basically the size of a Boxster today. Tiny. I can't even believe it fit in our garage. Yeah, and and the thing is that um, you just were so connected to the car. You felt every bump. You were shifting manually. You really kind of felt connected. This is now a luxury uh, car and a high performance car. And I was really intimidated by the old model. Just because of how much work it was to drive it. And also, um, I get that it's very fun for you as an enthusiast, but this one for me, it's just so easy. It's an everyday, everyday. vehicle. You can take yeah. it out all year, especially for us living in Vancouver. Um, and I can see the appeal. Now, one of the things is mechanically what they did to this car is they set the wheels wider apart. That's called the track. So you have bigger wheels overall, and the track is wider, so the car is uh, you know, long and wide, and that gives it a real presence to look at, yeah. but also really translates into the drive of the car, a much more neutral uh, feeling, plus the car is bigger. It's a positive and a negative, right? As I mentioned, yeah. the, the getting, getting bigger. It has 443 horsepower with this Carrera S. In the coupe, it makes a run to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.7 seconds. And if you get the Cabriolet, it's a run to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.9 seconds. Wow. And the average person would not be able to really tell much of a difference. This is amazing up here, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we really have this incredible open road. I love the Sea to Sky Highway with all the little turns. This is the car to drive on here. Mom. I wanted to bring up, you yeah. know, competition to this car, and we talked a bit about this before. Um, and you don't think there really is any competition, but if you are going to compare it to something, I was thinking sure. the Jag F-Type. The, the F-Type, okay. Because there are people who love British cars. They yeah. don't want to drive a German car, so that is Why? kind of a comparison. <laughs> uh, and then the other one would be the Corvette. Don't yes. you think? Yeah, but here's the thing is, I'm gonna be brutally honest about this. As someone who has owned four Porsches and two of them being 911s. Yeah. People who want a 911 
all want a 911. I know. The thing is, you can say to them, but look, here's a Corvette, it's way less. And they're like, I don't care, I want a 911. Here's the perfect example. I had two old air-cooled 911s. I was very fortunate to have those. Yeah. Now, the next car that I want is actually the Boxster S. Yeah. The last flat six Boxster S. That's the car that I want. Had I never owned those two 911s in the past, I would not want a Boxster S. All I would want would be the 911. Like it's this thing for uh, most motoring enthusiasts is that they have eyes for only one model and it's this car. Yeah. And the thing is that even when you get into the 911 lineup, there's this whole hierarchy of, well, you've just got a Carrera, you don't have an S. Oh, you've just got an S, you don't have a GT. It's this whole, <laughs> it's this whole crazy world. Yeah, and for a, a long time, they said the Boxster was a girl's car. No, it's nonsense. And it's not, but it's the same thing with the Boxster. You can get the Boxster, you can get the Boxster S. The it's GTS. the same with, it's the same with the Macan. You know, people don't just want the Macan; they want the S or the GTS. Yeah. Plus, you know. That's how Porsche makes so much money. It's I the know. most profitable car company per unit because they're selling the dream. And I remember reading surveys talking about if you could, if you won the lotto, you inherited a lot of money, you suddenly came into money, what's the one car that you would buy? Porsche was number one. And Andrea's very first time driving a 911. Today, yeah. Miami blue, baby, Miami yeah. blue. And you wore and the a, blue top. I wore a blue top and perfect, perfect day for it. I don't know why you're nervous. It's just a car. Oh, I know it's just a car, but it's only like $127,000 or something. <laughs> That's funny. $127,000. I'll take two. No, this car, the one you see here, I think is $175,000. Yeah. Well, it is, uh, no, it is the ass. That's Canadian dollars. <laughs> okay. So the one thing, another thing I don't exactly love is the little toggle thing to put it in gear. Yeah. Electric shifter. Right. Now, you know, you might not care, but you have the paddle shifters on the steering wheel. Yeah. Now, the old one, you could slap it back and forth to change gears. You can't do it with this one. Hmm. And when you're on the twisty track or autocross, yeah. sometimes it's easier just to change gears using the center instead of that. But for our purpose today, yeah. hey, we're putting it in drive and let the car do the work. For me, this works well. Okay. <laughs> All right. We've got it in drive. We've got it in yeah. sport. And you know what? We're away clear. We go. Clear for takeoff. And we're off. Pretty amazing. Pretty oh. amazing. Oh. Can you uh, picture yourself driving one of these every day? Uh, sure. Sure, <laughs> I could. <laughs> I think, I think every, somebody, you know when you pull up on a fancy car like this, people say, oh, you look good in that car. Yeah. And I say everybody looks good in a car like this. Everybody looks good. I mean, you know what? Beautiful. Beautiful. What can you say about this except what a, what a great day, what a fun ride, what an amazing car. Now, one of the other major benefits of being a modern 911 convertible or cabriolet is that with the old cars, you'd go over bumps and the whole thing would kind of shake. Yeah. Now, this feels as solid as uh, wow. as a coupe, right? So fun, so fun. And the handling is amazing. Yeah. You feel like you're in this little cockpit. You are. Oh my God, I'm so old, I'm so old. <laughs> That's how you, you know, getting a chance to experience a car like this, um, makes you want to do well in life, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's like it flying does. business class. Once you've flown business class once, you say to yourself, I want to do that again. Yeah. I want to make enough money that I get to fly business class. Well, we've had some conversations about that when you don't get to fly business class <laughs> and how much you really appreciate it. Well, the thing is, uh, for most people, cars like this are just a dream. Yeah. And it's just something that maybe one day they'll be able to attain. And a lot of people do eventually get into the Porsche world, but in the used market. Right? For sure. This car will eventually age and someone will buy it as a used car. Uh, here's the thing though. Now we've owned four Porsches. And the one thing I will say is these cars are very expensive. Yes. But they hold their value incredibly well. Yeah, pretty like you, amazing. You buy one of these and then you sell it four or five, ten years later, you get a big chunk of that money back in yes. resale value. You know, you can really see how you get a ticket in this thing. 
Yeah. Because it just it just flies and it just handles so well. And a big shout out to our peeps at Porsche for letting Andrea drive. Usually yeah. they say no, no, no. So nice. But how can you say no to somebody that drives a Porsche every day? That would be <laughs> silly, wouldn't it? Yeah, I I think so. Considering uh, we're we're big fans. Big fans. Remember I said this is for rich folks? <laughs> yeah. I have the full build sheet here. So just go through a couple of things. 3700 for the paint, uh, 23 for the rear axle steering, painted wheels, 1500, carbon fiber interior package, 2400. It goes on and on and on. Bose sound system, premium package, $6,000, adaptive sports seats, $4,000, $73,000 before tax. <gasps> Wow, that is a down payment on a house. You know what? I kind of like driving these once every few years. It's way cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Miami Blue is like $3,700. You want to look good. You know what it's like with fashion. You want to look good, you got to pay, yeah. man. You got to pay. Big bucks. So it was a good day? It was a great day. I was in an incredible car that I got to drive for the first time with an awesome guy on a beautiful highway, the Sea to Sky Highway, on an absolutely gorgeous day. Does it really get any better than this? As our friend Susan would say, it's a 25 out of 10. 25 out of 10. Car Cost Canada provides the dealer's cost, a list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get access to exclusive and powerful savings. The link is in the description below.